If you grew up in the 1970s or 1980s, then this is probably the first computer you ever owned. Introduced in 1978 at the Consumer Electronics Show, the original price tag was $50. Adjusted for inflation, that would be around $173 in today's cash. And if you look closely, you'll see it was actually made in the USA. So this was not just some cheap toy. And if you don't believe this is an actual computer, then I challenge that because it has a keyboard, it has a screen, it has a speech synthesizer, and even a ROM cartridge slot for new games and vocabulary. It uses a vacuum fluorescent display. I love the retro futuristic look of the screen. Interestingly enough, my unit actually has nine characters, but only eight are used, where the original model had only eight characters. The CPU is a TMS-1000, which was one of the first ever microprocessors. And believe it or not, it's only a 4-bit CPU. It's paired up with a TMC-0280 speech synthesis chip and 128K of ROM to hold the sample data, which works out to around 200 spoken words. It requires four C-cell batteries because the CPU and display are both energy hogs. On the side, it has a headphone jack and an external power connector. This product was so popular it has been featured in dozens of movies and TV shows, such as E.T. the Extraterrestrial, and even served as the inspiration for Mr. Spell of the Toy Story movies. It also spawns several sibling devices, such as the Speak and Math, for example. Alright, so let's take a look at some of the activities that you can actually do on one of these Speak and Spells. The primary function is to help kids learn to spell. By the way, you'll notice the keyboard is in alphabetical order and not the standard QWERTY layout used today. But if you think about it, development on this product started in 1976, long before personal computers ever became popular. Now they did have typewriters back then, but I'm guessing the uh, development team probably just didn't think that kids needed to learn to type back then. My favorite game is basically a knockoff of Hangman. It gives you some dashes and you start guessing letters. As you guess them, it will fill them in. But you only get a limited number of guesses. Another interesting feature is the code word. Here, you can type a word and it will scramble the word into a secret code, which I suppose you could write down and give to one of your friends at school, and when they get home, they can use their speak and spell to unscramble the words. Believe it or not, a common use of the speak and spell today is by musicians who have modified them to make interesting sounds for their music. This is referred to as circuit bending and have been used by dozens of popular bands such as Beck, for example. It's even featured on the front cover of one of Depeche Mode's albums. The Speak in Math is designed to ask you math problems and have you solve them. Solve it. Level 1. Level 2. 8 plus 92 is what? That's right. Try. It can also do greater than less than questions. It can also pronounce out a long number and have you type it in. Write it. Level 1. Level 3. 1,036. That's right. So here's the ultimate test. Let's find out how this product does with today's kids. I handed it to my 11-year-old daughter to have her try it out. I'll give you the results at the end of the video. There are also some other versions of this device, such as the Compact Speak and Spell, which lacks any sort of screen, and the Super Speak and Spell, which finally moves to an LCD screen and a QWERTY keyboard layout, and the Speak and Read. Also, the original version had raised keys, but most of the ones you'll find on sale, for example on eBay, are probably going to have the membrane keyboard like mine. Okay, I promised I would tell you what my 11-year-old had to say about these. She was too shy to come on camera herself, so basically she said they were fun for a few minutes, and then after, you know, 10 minutes or so, they got boring. Um, 
I'm guessing if you were to go back to the 70s or 80s when there was no iPods or computers, she might have had a little bit more than 10 minutes of fun with it. Since I'm 38 years old, um, I don't get too much fun out of them, but I do find them very interesting from a technological and historical perspective. I will tell you this, um, I never had to speak in math. Uh, I bought this on eBay for like 20 bucks, and um, it's not actually very fun. Uh, the speak and spell is actually considerably more interesting to play with. And uh, you know, one of the more baffling things to me about the speak and math is that it, it can't even act like a calculator. I mean, you would think with all this, um, technology here, they could have given you the option to also use it as a calculator. That could make it at least somewhat useful. I was kind of hoping I could leave this on my desk at work and, <laughs> and use it as a calculator sometimes, and uh, people would probably give me some strange looks about it, but um, I can't even do that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I uh, hope maybe you learned something interesting, and um, I'll see you again next time.